pleasure in supporting this bill to the next stage, and I'd look forward to the discussion of the Select Committee on it. Speaker. I call Michael Wood. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, in October of each year, I conduct a heritage tour around the streets of my community uh, uh, of Three Kings and the electorate of Mount Roskill, walking around sites of certain built and cultural heritage significance. And one of the buildings that is a highlight of that tour is the <laughs> old Mount Roskill fire station. And what is notable about that uh, is that it was one of the earliest and first public buildings in the growing community of Three Kings. It was built in about 1930. And at that time, there really weren't any other public buildings around. And what that points to is the fact that um, fire and emergency services are totally central uh, to the safe operation of our communities. In the case of my community, it was the first building you built because your community was vulnerable until you had uh, that service. Um, it's something that I think about a bit. Um, uh, my family uh, has many roots in the community of Thames, and the Kenny side of my family has about seven or eight generations of voluntary firefighters going back in that community, and that's something that they've been, and my family has been immensely uh, proud of. Um, and so, Madam Speaker, I think along with other members of this House, um, I'm very pleased to be supporting the bill uh, this evening. Uh, the work that uh, we in this House have gone through over a number of years, and it was primarily led, let's acknowledge him, by the uh, Honourable Peter Dunn in bringing together the fire and emergency services was a, a, a pretty monumental piece of work, actually, but probably a necessary one. And what we're doing in this bill, really, is ensuring that we get the implementation right. There are a couple of issues which have popped up. Uh, the first one is around the setting of uh, levies and the ability of insurers and brokers to adapt to the new regime. And I don't think uh, there's any particular um, reason that I'm aware of that we can hold, um, we would look to hold to any, anyone to account for the fact that we're not able to get those set as quickly as possible. That was envisaged to happen uh, in 2019. This bill looks to extend that out to 2020 or 2021, depending on uh, the circumstances. And it seems that there are just pretty fair reasons uh, for that. It's simply very difficult to get the systems in place to have levies set appropriately by insurers and brokers. Um, the second major change in the bill I'm, I'm quite interested in, and uh, that is the change um, to um, have an exemption in respect of the collections of public museums and public art galleries and whare uh, taonga. And I think this is a really important one. It's interesting to look back um, uh, when the uh, original bill first took effect. I think Te Papa's insurance bill jumped from something like $3 million, uh, their uh, levy, sorry, jumped from something like $3 million per year to $4.5 million per year. It was a 50% increase. And of course, if you think about it, um, the collections of many of these cultural institutions are incredibly valuable. And so that has a flow-on effect to how much the levy increase might be. But at the same time as having a stock of incredibly valuable goods, these are institutions that don't necessarily have a commensurate uh, amount of revenue coming in to support those kinds of increases. Uh, so I think the change within this bill and this is in clause 25A, um, which uh, effectively exempts um, uh, the uh, collections of museums, public art gallery galleries, and whare taonga, um, um, is an important one, just to make sure that while we're getting this regime right, uh, we're not unfairly penalising institutions, cultural institutions, that are very, very important. Uh, and so, Madam Speaker, I think uh, those two small changes are very sensible, uh, they're about making sure that this legislation, which has wide uh, support, continues to be supported by being responsive to those needs that have been identified. And because of that, along with my colleagues and I think everyone else in the House, I'm very happy to commend the bill to the House. Thank you. Madam Speaker. I call Matt King. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, look, I'd like to uh, talk in relation to this bill. This is